nerds, what's up? Today's video is going to be about some TV and movies that I've seen in the last few months since I made this video the last time. I don't know when it, what that was. These TV shows or movies are in order of when I started them. It doesn't necessarily mean that I finished a series or that I even finished the movie, but just that I at least tried. And so let's just get right on into this. So the first series, Netflix series, that I want to talk about is 13 Reasons Why. I watched episode 1 of season 2 and then I went back to try to watch season 1 again and then I got distracted and I didn't pick it back up. But I really want to get to it. <laughs> I suck. Uh, my friend and I like to watch this show together so we watched season two, episode one together, and then we're really confused and decided we needed to rewatch. But this show, as you know, as you probably know, is pretty dark. It's about a girl who kills herself, sends these tapes out to all the people she thinks is at fault for her doing so, and then you get to watch the things that happened right before she decided to kill herself. And it's a really dark time. I didn't have it in me to watch the season again, but I really, really want to because I really want to watch season two because it has the topic of a um, school shooting in it, which I'm a substitute teacher. It's very prevalent in our time right now, and so I think it's going to be hitting hard. And I don't know if I'm emotionally prepared for that, but yeah, I did watch an episode of that. Next show that I have to talk about is Desperate Housewives. I rewatched the entire series for the like fourth time. Why am I like this? Desperate Housewives is a show that was made a while ago, like in the early 2000s. It was on ABC and it is about all of these different women and their families who live on this cul-de-sac in it like it's one of those cities that could be anywhere in the US like they don't necessarily specify where they are um and there's like not only normal drama like cheating and stuff like that but then there's also drama like murder and stuff like that so it's a very over dramatic show but I really really enjoyed it I watched it kind of with Sierra. If you guys know who Sierra is, she used to be Sierra Reach. Doesn't make videos anymore, but she's one of my best friends. And we were we started watching it together because she had never seen the show and then I continued watching it and she has now finished the show and so good. I loved every minute of rewatching that show. It's so dramatic. Matt hated every time I was watching it, but what can you do? Next thing I have to talk about is a movie called R Wind River. So if you guys didn't know, Sicario 2 came out recently, which is on this list as well. And because C Sicario 2 came out, Matt decided that we should watch all of that writer's movies. And they were all really good. Wind River is about this murder mystery that happens on an Indian or Native American reservation and so this girl dies and this guy who is like a he's a hunter of um big like like mountain lions and stuff to keep the city safe um so he's the one that finds her and then it basically is following this sequence of events because they can't technically call it a murder because she technically died from natural, um, like, the cold. And so because of that, they can't get the fed or, uh, feds involved. But the police force doesn't have enough men and stuff to really be able to do the investigation. And the whole thing was such a fucking disaster. Like, I mean, in a great way. That movie was really rough, hard trigger warning for sexual assault and rape and murder like very intense scenes in this movie all of that writer who did Sicario and all of those movies which I will talk about as we get through it actually the next one is also the same author uh, writer very very gory the next movie that I have to talk about is Hell or High Water which is also by that same writer who wrote Sicario and um, Wind River. This one is probably my least favorite of all of the movies I think although it was really good it, it had a pretty different feel from the other ones. This one was a little bit more comedic still very serious but but had some more funny and it's about these two brothers who like 
go on this heist but like they're not well prepared for these heists that they do and yeah it's just like this movie of like them fucking up but like getting away with it and the cops trying to find them and it was also really good, really bloody and gory, and it was really good. The next movie that I have to talk about, oh my gosh, I loved it so much, was Ocean's 8, and it was Ocean's 11, but with women instead of with men. And it had an amazing cast. Sandra Bullock was our main character. Helena Bottom Carter was in it. There was just, I don't even remember all of the people that were in it. Everyone was great, and it was a while when I watched it now. Um, it was good. If you like movies like Ocean's Eleven, like, I mean, it's literally the same, like, style plot, obviously, but with a women cast instead of with a male cast. Not, like, the best movie ever made, but, but really good. Next movie that I watched, I actually watched twice, and I do not think it was worth twice seeing, but it was Ant-Man and the Wasp. And it just wasn't as good as Ant-Man, but I was really entertained by the end of it. You know how Marvel movies always do that? like credits and then another scene and I was waiting for that scene because I knew it was gonna have to do with what happened in Avengers and it did that was all I cared about <laughs> and I also just really okay I do have to say I love Ant-Man and Ant-Man and the Wasp for for this reason if not any other reason I think that they're funny sure but what I really think is important is that we watch a man and a woman who are divorced, one of which is remarried, have a great relationship not only with their daughter, but with each other, including the stepdad. It is one of the most heartwarming things I have ever seen. Ah, it hurts. I am a family from divorced parents. My parents were divorced when I was one years old, so that's all I've ever known. Both of them have been remarried. My parents did a really good job of having at least a cordial relationship. They were able to go to events and, and um, they were able to like have dinners together every once in a while for special events like prom and stuff. And so I really was lucky to have that and I think it's so important to show a healthy divorced set of family. The next thing that I watched was a TV show called Billions and I gave up after a few episodes but Matt is still watching it which means that I still see some of it. This show is about this the US attorney and this hot shot I don't even remember what the term is for his job but he like takes people's money and then makes them money with selling stocks and buying stocks and stuff like that and he thinks he's doing illegal trading and so there, it's just this like cat and mouse game throughout all of the seasons. The thing that I don't really love about this show is that all of the characters are at the same level of anger and cussing and it's just always the same which makes it not matter that there's anger and yelling and you, you all are trying to act scary and cuss and it's not doing anything because there's no one who's not like that, if you get what I mean. So it just, it feels a little overdone for me and so that's why I stopped watching. But Matt seems to enjoy it. He has the, he understands where I'm coming from but he just is still into it. Next two movies were Sicario and Sicario 2, both of which I hadn't seen until recently. Sicario 1 follows this girl played by Emily Blunt who was amazing and she gets asked to be a part of this team to go after the Mexican cartel because she is in this bombing that happens right at the border of Mexico and Texas. I think it's Texas. And so she gets asked to be brought onto the team and then basically it's all about how like once they're in Mexico and they're going after this cartel, all of the rules go out the window and Emily Blunt's character is like fighting the like hope of doing it right and seeing justice and and you know getting arrests and all this stuff and then the rest of the team is like fuck it all let's kill him and it was really interesting very bloody it's that same writer that I was talking about throughout the earlier parts of this video I did really like it uh, I liked the first one better because I really liked Emily Blunt's character but it ends with like very little hope um, and then Emily Blunt isn't in the sequel but it follows some of the same characters and it, it has a very different plot but I don't want to talk about it just in case it does spoil some of the previous stuff but it's just it's bloody and fucked up basically. <laughs> Next 
show that I did watch a few episodes of was Insatiable, which is a Netflix original. It's a very satirical comedy. Um, it has a lot of flack from booktube community, so I decided to try to watch it because I wanted to be able to have an opinion and formulate one of my own with my own thoughts instead of just what everyone else decided based on a preview. Watched three episodes, I want to say, and then I gave up. It's definitely not one of those shows that you can binge watch because it is very campy and I can't do a lot of campy. I really enjoyed the adult characters a lot in the story. <laughs> You've got these like high class southern women trying to be a part of the junior league. Melissa Milano is hilarious in it. Dynamics between the adults in the in the show are really fascinating and funny. The main show is Debbie Ryan's character and she, as the preview shows, used to be fat, um, gets her jaw broken by being punched in the face by a homeless dude and then because she has her jaw wired shut she loses a bunch of weight before school starts the following year and no one recognizes her and she thinks she has this power because she's now pretty or skinny is more accurate of the term. It's kind of about her realizing that like just because she suddenly got skinny doesn't mean that she's okay and doesn't mean that the like trauma of being made fun of and like getting fucked with all the time when she was fat is now all of a sudden disappeared and great and it was interesting it definitely was interesting um i don't really have a lot of opinion yet because i only watched three episodes and never went back the next movie that i watched was a rewatch and it was pretty woman and i just had a really great time watching julia roberts and Richard Greer and it was amazing and I just loved everything about it. Next show me and Matt watched was Castle Rock. Holy shit, thank you Chelsea from Chelsea Dolly Reads for getting me into the show. It was so good. It's a Hulu original and it's an original story but it has Stephen King characters and elements in it which I didn't pick up on necessarily most of because I don't know Stephen King all that well. It takes place in Shawshank and it's about this creepy ass town and it was so good. I can't even give you any explanation because it'll give something away. Like just put on episode one, be confused a little bit. It's a little bit freaky, it's a little bit weird, a little bit creepy, but like you'll have a fun time. I don't do scary movies and I did fine in it so I highly recommend you give it a chance. Next movie that I watched was Deadpool 2. I fucking love Ryan Reynolds. I liked most everything about it. I thought that the main kid character, the new one, um, his acting fell just a little bit short for me, but I loved the like storyline of it, but his acting was just not quite there for me, but like I love Ryan Reynolds. Oh my god. He's amazing. He 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 carried it for for his other his other co main character. The next movie that I have to talk about is Bernie. <laughs> have you guys heard of this movie? I had never heard of it. It came out in like 2012 and it's this weird mockumentary comedy starring Jack Black and it's based on a true story. I don't want to give you away exactly what it's about but like it's about this guy who played by um, Jack Black named Bernie who is in Texas, he's like from Indiana or something, and he comes to Texas and he becomes a funeral parlor like assistant. He becomes really good friends with this woman whose husband dies and he like becomes her companion, but well, not a sexual companion, but everyone's like whispering and wondering if it was a sexual thing. And then something happens and everything goes from there. There's a lot of Jack Black singing in it and I had no, I didn't know that Jack Black started out as a comedian who sang, like that was one of his shticks. I had no idea that that was a thing. So watching this, I was like, holy shit, it was so good. I, I loved it. I watched it twice because I showed it to Sierra after I watched it and I would highly recommend you watch it. The next thing that I've been watching is So You Think You Can Dance season like 16 or something like that. I love So You Think You Can Dance. I used to watch it religiously back a few years ago and then recently Hulu recommended it to me and I was like yes I'm doing that. I didn't like how they had the show set up this this year. They only had a top 10 not a top 20 which was depressing but 
it was really good and just watching live dance is I mean obviously I'm not there but it still was live performances when they did it Whew, love it love everything about it the next show that I've been watching is the same show that I'm still watching and it is switched at birth which is an ABC family show made a few years ago and it has it's about these two girls who find out that they were switched at birth while they're in high school is when they find out and one of them is deaf so there's a shit ton of sign language in this show and I started watching it because I was interested in seeing how I felt about the sign language now having been to school for it and having a lot more sign language skills than I did when I used to watch it and my main thing that I have to say is the deaf culture and deaf representation and deaf rights and stuff that they talk about is all so well done. I do have to say that the signing of the hearing people, you can tell that they don't actually know sign language, that they rehearsed what movements of their hands do they have to say with these words. That's how they did it. And then there are the deaf actors and hear hard of hearing actors who all you can tell which which ones know sign language and which ones are like this and there's that and then there's also called simcomming which means they sign and talk at the same time I can't even do it it's really hard and it fucks with your sign language um, because you immediately start thinking in your your primary language your first language which for me is speaking and so because I'm thinking in talking my sign language skills decrease because my brain isn't thinking in sign language my brain is thinking and talking and then giving some signs so you lose a lot of grammar and stuff when you simcom and just yeah it's yeah <laughs> but I still am watching it because I'm ridiculous next movie that I went and saw was Mission Impossible number 500 and I it wasn't good we also watched one episode of Sharp Objects which I believe is on Netflix I want to say um, and then we watched an episode of Ozark which is also on Netflix and we started and continued watching Ozark so sharp objects I did like it um, I probably will continue watching it Matt wasn't that into it so I'll be watching it on my own probably when I finish switched at birth and yeah it, it seemed good but he's not into watching it so we started watching Ozark together we're now on season two it's really good season two is even better than season one and the last thing that i have to say is another rewatch and i rewatched bridesmaids which is a comedy and good and about bridesmaids and it was weird watching it because i'm getting married <laughs> and my best friend is also getting married so it was like the maid of honor and the bride problems put together into my own brain i was just like hmm. Those are all the TV shows and movies that I've watched recently. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. What is your favorite and least favorite movie and TV show that you've watched, movie or TV show that you've watched recently? Um, I think my favorite one, I think I have to separate comedy versus um, like serious. I think if I was picking a comedy, I'd pick Bernie. And if I was picking a serious movie, I'd probably pick Wind River. That movie really hit something hard inside of me and it was rough but really really well done I think so yeah those are the two um, least favorite I'd probably say billions Castle Rock was also really good that's also up there top three okay and then yeah billions is one of my least favorite and I oh Mission Impossible it was not good they needed to stop they did not need to make another one I don't know why they made another one that was a bad idea um, those are mine. What are yours? And give this, uh, so make sure to hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. Give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed. I make videos every Wednesday and Saturday, so if you want to be notified every time I make a video, you can always hit that little notification bell. And I will see you guys very soon with another one. Bye! I wish I could.